Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the role of the complexins in Huntington's disease. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing the normal physiological function of the basal ganglia. Okay, so remember we said, if we just go over the page, we said that when we want to make a voluntary movement, such as picking up a pen, uh, the prefrontal cortex comes up with the idea that it wants to do that. Uh, so this is the portion that, if you want to ascribe one portion of the brain that is responsible for consciousness, uh, you'd point at this portion here. Okay, um, so um, this comes up with the idea that it wants to pick up a pen. The prefrontal cortex sends that um, instruction to the supplementary motor area, uh, which then begins to try and find a motor plan. It begins to construct a motor plan uh, for that action, for picking up that pen. The supplementary motor area then sends that motor plan to the primary motor area, which then sends it to actually uh, be initiated down the corticospinal tract, which will lead on to the alpha motor neurons, which innervate the actual muscles. Okay, so the basal ganglia basically is like a security man that stops um, that stops motor plans coming from the supplementary motor area and going into the primary motor cortex because the supplementary motor area comes up with a huge number of motor plans that you don't want to actually initiate. Uh, it's continuously practicing coming up with motor plans and you don't actually want them initiated. So you need to have some way of basically blocking motor plans that you don't want to actually be initiated. Um, and that is what the basal ganglia does. So let's now try and figure out how it does that. So we've discussed the anatomy of the basal ganglia. So now we know where every, all of these structures are. Let's now discuss what they're actually going to do. So we'll start with the thalamus then, this um, uh, turquoise egg-like structure here. The thalami are sending up uh, projections, basically, to the primary motor cortex. Okay, so the thalami are sending up projections onto the primary motor cortex. So let's draw a um, flow diagram for this. So in the thalamus or the thalami, okay, but we'll say the right thalamus here because we're talking about the, um, sorry, we'll say the left thalamus because we've always been drawing pictures for the left side of the brain. Okay, so the thalamus is going to send up activatory projections to the primary motor cortex, which remember I said is often abbreviated to M1. Okay. Right. Now, if you want a um, if you want a motor plan to actually be initiated, uh, i.e. a motor plan that's come from the supplementary area into the primary motor cortex, if you want that to actually be initiated, the thalamus needs to give stimulation to the primary motor cortex, basically. If not, you're not going to actually get the motor plan initiated. Okay. Now, basically, most of these motor plans that the supplementary motor area is um, is producing, you don't want to actually initiate them. So you don't want the thalamus to be sending commands to the primary motor area telling it uh, that um, it should initiate these motor plans. So usually what you have is you have uh, another structure which is sending neurons onto the thalamus and inhibiting it. So this is the internal globus pallidus, and I haven't actually looked up how to spell pallidus. Internal globus pallidus. I think it's a double L, pallidus, like so. Yes, that looks better. Okay, so internal globus pallidus. So if we look at our neuroanatomy diagram here, here is the internal globus pallidus in blue. So little fibers are going to come across from the internal globus pallidus to the thalamus to inhibit those neurons of the thalamus which are going up to the primary motor cortex and activating it and telling it to allow the motor plans that the supplementary motor area is sending to actually go through and be sent down to the alpha motor neurons. Okay, so we're continuously stopping the thalamus from actually allowing this hap to happen. Okay, so now if the prefrontal cortex has actually sent a command 
down to uh, the supplementary motor area, okay, and it's told it to make this movement, to make the motor plan for this movement, then what the prefrontal cortex will also do is it will send a command to the basal ganglia, specifically to the striatum, so this chordate nucleus and this putamen. It will send a command to the chordate nucleus and putamen, basically, that says, okay, I want you to now actually let my motor plan go through, basically. I want this motor plan that I've ordered the supplementary motor area to make, I want that to go through into the primary motor cortex and actually be initiated. So it sends a command to the chordate nucleus and the putamen, which together are known as the uh, striatum or the corpus striatum, okay, and it tells it that it wants this motor plan to be initiated. Now, if we want the motor plan to be initiated, what we need to do is we need to activate the thalamocortical projections. We need to activate these projections that are coming from the thalamus to the cortex. I think I might actually try drawing this. I'll get a, another piece of paper. All right. Okay, so let's draw a picture. So let's have our picture of the brain on side here. So this is the picture of the cerebral cortex viewed from the side, remember. Okay, so here's our temporal lobe, a little bit out of, um, out of um, scale. Here's the primary motor cortex here. Right, okay. So this is the primary motor cortex. Now, let's draw another picture here with um, the thalamus uh, sitting atop the midbrain. So, here's another picture, and this would be at the centre of this picture, but I don't want to draw them all on one picture because it will just get messy. So instead, I'll draw a separate picture which has the, mid, uh, the thalamus on it. So here's our thalamus here, okay, and it's sitting atop the midbrain here. And then underneath the midbrain, oops, you then have the pons down here. Okay, and then underneath the pons you have the medulla. So here's this other picture. So this is our picture of the thalamus here. Okay, and I think on all, also on this picture we'll show the putamen and the chordate nucleus. Uh, so this is the thalamus here. Okay. Oh, oops. Okay, actually, I'll draw a separate picture to show the chordate and the putamen. So, this is our... Actually, I can show it on that picture. I can show it on this picture. So, if we have the putamen sort of sitting out here... So, this is the... Oops. Oh, is this pen starting to go? Uh, let me just have a little scribble over here. Oh, I think the pen is starting to go. Wait a second now. Just get another one.